integrated rate law. Okay, so integrated rate laws, as opposed to just regular rate law, expresses concentration of reactant as a function of time. So utilizing an integrated rate law, we can figure out the concentration of a particular reactant at any point in time in the reaction. Okay, so we are going to do we're going to do four things here. So using the data that we graphed today in class, we are going to determine the rate law for that reaction, determine the integrated rate law for that reaction, find the value of the rate constant, K, and then finally calculate the concentration of dinitrogen pentoxide at exactly 150 seconds into the reaction. What we found today, as we were graphing on the calculator, many of you for the first time, is that the natural log of the concentration versus time gave us the linear relationship between concentration and time. And from that linear relationship, we know that it is first order. Keeping in mind that if concentration versus time gave us the linear relationship, it would be a zero-order reactant. First order uh, comes from the natural log of concentration versus time, giving us a linear relationship. And we know that if the reciprocal of the concentration versus time gives us the linear relationship, that shows us that the reactant is second order. Okay, so therefore, because we know that it's a first order reaction, um, the rate law is simply going to be rate equals K times the concentration of N2O5. Okay, now because it's first order, do we really have to write the one? We don't. I'm going to, just so we see it. But we know that anything to the first power is itself, so it, it's pretty redundant, actually, to write it. There's the rate law. Nothing new here. Just the regular old rate law. Now, integrated rate law is, um, you're going to get that off of your rate law table. And for a test, this is something that you are going to have to memorize. So, the integrated rate law looks like this. It's going to be the natural log of the concentration of N2O5 is equal to um, negative KT plus the natural log of N2O5 initially. So, that's what that little zero means. That means the initial concentration of N2O5. So in this case, I'm just going to draw this arrow. Uh, this is the initial concentration. And for this particular case, you guys, what's that concentration going to be? What did we start out with? 0.1 molar? Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be 0 0.100 molar for this particular set of data. So that's what this little sub-zero means, initial concentration, the concentration we started with. Okay, so notice, we're not plugging in any numbers into the integrated rate law. And if we look at the rate law table, and this is a mistake people make a lot, um, instead, of, because in your rate law table, it's generic. So they put it a capital A and a capital A, which is just a placeholder for a generic reactant. Um, but when you're writing the actual integrated rate law for something, you have to plug in what the identity of the reactant is into the brackets. Okay, so this is the integrated rate law. Now, using the integrated rate law, 
we can calculate all kinds of things about N2O5 in this reaction. But before we can do that, we need to figure out the identity of K, the rate constant. And I'm going to show you how to do this in two different ways. Okay. The value of K for a first order reactant. So value of K for first order slope is equal to negative K. Now, if we go back to the integrated rate law, do you see what form the integrated rate law is in? It's actually in slope intercept form where y equals mx plus b. Did any of you see that before? Okay, so this is the slope of the linear relationship. So what we can do is we can actually just find slope the way that we normally find slope, that you've been finding slope, uh, I don't know, since you were in sixth grade. So we can go change y over change of x to calculate the slope of the line, and then we know that the slope of the line is equal to the opposite of k. So let's go ahead and do it using change of y over change in x. All right, now keeping in mind that we have to use what gave us the linear relationship. And in this case, the linear relationship came from the natural log of the concentration. That is what our y-axis is, is the natural log. So we have to go the change in the natural log of N2 over N2 over 5 over the change in, what is our x-axis? Time. So we will go back to the data table. We are going to take our initial data point, and those are the two data points that we're going to use to calculate slope. So in this case, you guys, it's going to be negative 5, point zero seven five minus negative two point three oh three and then we're going to put that over the change in time which is four hundred seconds minus zero okay first and last first and maybe third data point we're going to get a little bit varying um, uh, quantities uh, for K, depending on which data point we use, but um, use, utilizing the entire time is often the way to go. All right, so if we do this, you guys, we end up getting a value of K equal to negative 6.93 times 10 to the minus third and our unit in this case is seconds to the negative one. Okay, so this is one way that we can find k. So what is our slope then? If slope is equal to the opposite of k, then our slope, or the value of k, is it going to be this? Did I make a mistake? Yes, I made a mistake. It's not going to be negative 6.93 times 10 to the minus third. It is going to be the opposite of that which is a positive 6.93 times 10 to the minus third. Now, you guys, we could have done this another way. So we can use slope to figure it out. We can also plug into the integrated rate law. So we can take the natural log of any concentration. So let's say, let's take the concentration, uh, and I'm going to set this up in a minute. Um, 
at 400 seconds. So what we would do is we would put the concentration at 400 seconds, we would put in the time being 400 seconds, and this value would be 0.1 because that's our initial concentration, and then we would just rearrange, we would just plug and chug and solve for k. So we could do it that way too. So I'm just going to plug those numbers in so that you see those numbers. Um, so that you realize that, you guys, we can do it either of two ways. So let's do, I'm, I'm going to come back to this. So let's find the value of k using the integrated rate law. So we're going to say natural log of N2O5 is equal to negative kt plus the natural log of N2O5 at time zero. All right, so then what we would do is we would plug in. So we're trying to find k is what we're doing. We would plug in natural log of, let's take our last data point. So our last data point is 400, no, our last data point is 0 0.00625. equal to negative k, what is our time that's given us this concentration? It's 400 seconds plus the natural log of our initial concentration, which is 0 0.100 molar. Okay, and we solve for k. So you can find k in two ways, using slope or um, just plugging in values into the integrated rate law. Now, the last example that we're going to do, you guys, is we're going to plug into the integrated rate law, and I'm going to work through it. So, what it's asking you to do is figure out the concentration of N2O5 at 150 seconds. Natural log of N2O5 is equal to negative kT plus the natural log of N2O5. So it's going to go natural log of N2O5. That's what we're trying to get. That is our x equal to negative 6.93 times 10 to the minus third. So 6.93 times 10 to the minus third, and our time is 150 seconds plus, okay, so we're trying to find it at 150 seconds, T, 150. K, where did I get this number? I calculated it. We're trying to find that. This is the initial concentration, so natural, natural log of 0 0.100. What we're going to end up having is negative, this is going to end up being negative 1.040, and this is going to end up being a negative 2.303. So I'm just going to say minus... 2.303, because this value is negative, 2.303. All right, so this is the natural log of the concentration of what we're looking for. So this value is negative 3.343. Okay, that's the difference between these two, and that is the natural log of what we're looking for. Okay, that's not what we're looking for. That is not the concentration. That is the natural log of the concentration. So, how do we work backwards? Well, in my day, and I know it's, they don't say it the same way anymore, this is the we're looking for the anti-log of that number. The anti-log is what we call it, but on your calculator,
denominator, it is the e to the x button. e to the x. That's what you're going to use. So you're looking for the anti-log of negative 3, point 343. So that number is the natural log of the concentration. We just want the concentration. So we're going to find the anti-log of that number. And that will get rid of our ln over here. And we use the e to the x button to do that. So um, the anti-log of negative 3.343 is going to be equal to So what is our concentration at 150 seconds? 0 0.0353 molar. And how did I find that? By plugging into the integrated rate law. 